let's talk about the biomagnification questions now. Describe how brown pelicans have accumulated demonic acid in Monterey Bay during the 91 outbreak. So in 1991, there was a big outbreak of this toxin throughout this area, and it was found in brown pelicans. How did it get in there? So, okay, so the point here is that pelicans ate, what do pelicans eat? Which ones? Fish. I know. Which ones? Glad that's on tape. Yep. Pelicans ate anchovies. Oh. And then anchovies ate what? The plankton, the pseudo -nitia. So in other words, domoic acid accumulates in the pseudo -nitia, the diatom. It then is gone, makes it to the anchovies when they eat it, and then from anchovies into pelicans. All right. Just so that, because, well, never mind, I'm not thinking it's All right, now. Number eight. Seriously. It's embarrassing. Give this to the person. Now, the concentration of demoic acid in the water, and again, this is in the water, was ten times, or one times ten to the negative eight. If you were to write that out longhand, it would be zero point zero 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 one. Okay? Very, very teeny tiny. Okay, not much. However, in the producers, it was 0.5 milligrams per liter, much higher. So, how many more times concentrated is the demoic acid in the producers in comparison to the water? What would you do? To do this, you would take the big value and divide by the small value, which is times 10 to the negative 8. And if you do this correctly with your calculator, you end up with a value of 5 million more times. Now, why does this happen? Why does the phytoplankton accumulate so much of this toxin? Input the title of the activity. This is called bioaccumulation. You just built it up. Uh, accumulation. It builds it up within its tissue to come to the environment. Okay? Now, number nine is a related question. The domoic acid concentrations of primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers is 0.23, 2.07, and 3.8 milligrams per liter respectively. Why does it get higher and higher with each trophic level? It. That's called biomagnification. That is biomagnification. All right. Time for a little bit of an inference here with number 10. All right, just pretend that today is Thursday, okay? Today's Thursday. Opening season is scheduled for Saturday, the opening season for the razor clams. Razor clams are known to, to sequester or accumulate this toxin. Well, regulatory levels of the acid in razor clams is set at 20. If it gets above 20, 
then you need it. Okay? For the past month, several months, it's been about three micrograms, well below 20, so it's safe to eat. However, yesterday, it went up to 10. Okay? Keep in mind that it takes 24 hours to test the plants for that tomorrow acid. What would you do? Well, don't get ahead of yourself here, because what day is today? Thursday. When does the season start? Saturday. So what do you think you do? Test. Friday. If it goes up, then you won't eat them. Go up. If he gets to 15, maybe he goes over 20. Don't eat them. If it goes down, then you are apparently safe, although you may want to use more water. Not to eat too many. Folic acid, which we called it yesterday, is a neurotoxin. This is with your nervous system and kills you. So it's not something you can take in life. The last one we have to answer is why does the folic acid not harm anchovies? Because it does accumulate in anchovies. But why does it not harm predators like sea lions? Or why does it harm predators like sea lions? Yeah, anchovies have a lesser amount. So it's, it's kind of like within their their safe level. Predators, as Connor was mentioned, biomagnified. So it has higher levels of toxins. Alrighty. Good.